Design in the Balcony Garden on Bloom and Grow YouTube Show. All right, plant friends. We just had the most epic planting day and I can't wait to share the whole journey. I've been taping this entire journey of potting up my balcony garden for at least a month to take you along every single step that I took to turn my nine square feet I repeat, nine square feet, if I can do this, you can as well. Um, how to maximize the amount of food that I can grow and flowers that I can grow in nine square feet of my balcony garden. A few things I just wanna let you know ahead of time, you're gonna learn a lot along all the different shots that I took, but we are on the fourth floor of a walk up, so carrying soil up four flights of stairs was a really interesting and wonderful workout. Thank you, Espoam Organics. We have unobstructed southern facing windows. The is right here which is why I keep pointing to it we have unobstructed southern facing light so we're super fortunate that if you're gonna grow edibles you really do need six to eight hours of bright light and we have that to the point that I'm a little bit nervous for our cucumbers I'm not sure if it might be too much light but I'm curious um, and also in terms of what we grow in honestly over three years I've kind of just accumulated some interesting things so we have grow bags bloom was Bloom Living was one of our sponsors last year, B-L-O-E-M. They sent us a lot of grow bags. Grow bags are great because they're a little bit more malleable. So say you have a 12 inch pot, but you only have 11 inches of space. You can kind of like mush the <laughs> grow bag to kind of fit those nooks and crannies, which is great. So we've got a bunch of grow bags. We have one that Gardenuity had sent us with an herb garden a couple of years ago. And then we have different sized pots that I've also accumulated. The majority of the pots that we have are plastic, ideally eco-friendly. Sometimes they're just pots that I've saved from other plants that I've gotten. Um, and then we have the raised bed planter, which you're gonna learn a little bit more about. It's a garden, balcony garden hack that I did. So those are just a few details to say Set you up to understand the insane journey that this month has been. So I hope you get inspired to keep blooming and keep growing and grow your own food this summer! Okay, so here is the scale version of the balcony. As you see, this is the AC. Um, basically, anything here in this area, hot air blows on it. So we couldn't put any plants here because they would get fried. So I bought a raised bed that's on legs. So the garden bed is gonna sit on top of where the hot air blows out. Then I made to scale versions of all of the containers that I have to try and figure out what would be the most efficient um, way to grow all of my food. So next to the raised bed, I put two 12 inch grow bags. These are gonna be my two tomatoes. Um, they have, they're built for tomatoes. Grow bags next to the raised bed. Then I've got my peas starting right now. My peas are here. Um, they're gonna be done in July and we're gonna swap this out, but for right now, I have peas going on here. Then, because this might still be hot, the bottom of the bed, I'm still going to put um, long planters in the raised bed like this. So I've got long planters in the raised bed like that. I have a grow bag in the raised bed as well, growing bush beans. Then, this is the little ledge that I take my cushion out and sit every morning. Then I'm gonna have a 12 inch grow bag with cucumbers. Um, I have a couple of plants that need to trellis, so I thought I would try and train them up the railing of my balcony. So we've got cucumbers here, and then we've got peppers, and there should be, oh, oopsies. This is the other big one. This is the one with the beans. Then we've got peppers that are going here, and then we'll have uh, cucumber, no, we're gonna have cucumbers and eggplants here and then a pepper here. Then in the July, when the peas are done, we're gonna move this out. By that time, these plants will be large and we'll probably move those plants like that and they'll all be able to trellis up the balcony. And then I think I'm gonna put maybe some wildflowers in here and just have them grow. Um, we also, I think, have some sage that will go in a smaller container. So, in case you ever are interested in doing this for yourself, I think it's gonna be a really efficient balcony and I'm really excited to see how it goes. And the type A human in me really enjoyed making all these cute little <laughs> pots. All right, so 
I got my shipment of seedlings from Plants by Post. You order online. I wanted to show you guys, this is how they come. They arrived, it's Thursday afternoon. I am going to take the plants out of the box, put them all in here. Um, I'm gonna water them and let them sit overnight and just chill out for a minute and tomorrow I'm gonna pot them all up. So I just wanted to show you every step of the way. friends so I've shown you the balcony garden I've shown you the design that I'm gonna do and I just wanted to show you my crazy setup my balcony garden is so small that I actually have to pot all of the containers up in my kitchen and then I will be transporting them for their resting places <laughs> for the summer the more I learn about gardening the more I realize that your soil is what feeds your plants and your soil is going to be whether or not you're successful. We all know that I love Espoma Organics. I highly recommend you using a really high quality organic garden soil. If you can invest somewhere, I think soil is definitely one of the places you should because it's super successful. So I'm going to be putting them in the potting mix because I'm using containers. If you have raised beds, they also have raised bed mix or gardening soil like my mom would use in her normal garden. And I'm also going to try the Biotone Starter because it's um, plant food that you put in at the beginning of your plant. It helps your plants kind of establish in their containers. And in my soil science class, I learned all about mycorrhizae, which are fungus, root fungus, and Biotone has mycorrhizae in it, and the root fungus attached to the roots, and they help the roots absorb water and nutrients better. And I'm super curious about it, so I definitely am going to experiment with that. So I am going to get rid of all of the old soil, kind of get my plants separated, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the first thing I want to plant up is our tomatoes. If you're interested in growing tomatoes, check out episode 20 of the podcast. My mom and tomato expert Craig LaHoulier come on to share her Italian garden wisdom and his expert tomato growing wisdom. But I wanted to start with tomatoes first because there's a bunch of stuff that I want to share with you guys that I've learned over the years. So number one, um, have great soil. I want the power of the mycorrhizae so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of the biotone in and mix it with the soil so tomatoes grow differently than other edible plants and I'm sure we all know this by now but for those of you who don't because I did not know when I started um, tomatoes have those um, on their stem they have little hairs and those hairs turn into roots so when you're planting tomatoes you actually, obviously, as houseplant parents, were taught to plant up to the, the top of the root ball. So how the plant comes, we wanna plant up to the top of the root ball and no more, or else it could cause a myriad of problems with our plant. But with tomatoes, we're actually going to plant up to about here. I'm gonna remove these leaves and I'm gonna plant up to here and all of these little hairs and these little nodes that I remove are gonna sprout more roots and it's gonna help the tomato establish. I like to grow cherry tomatoes on my balcony because Billy and I love tomatoes. I'm Italian, tomatoes, basil, I mean, we're here for it. Tomatoes are our favorite thing to grow. I just personally feel like if you're, balco uh, if you're gardening in nine square feet like I am, you want like the biggest bang for your bunk and buck, bunk buck and a cherry tomato is going to give you a lot of little cherry tomatoes quickly and you're going to be able to continually eat those cherry tomatoes where sometimes with larger you know heirloom varieties they're amazing and they're delicious but you're waiting for not as many tomatoes and we would rather have like a shit ton of little guys that we can be eating every day than like waiting all season for one so this is a red cherry tomato i'm gonna pop it out of the bag i mean sorry out of the pot I'm gonna remove these bottom leaves and get this in the soil. Yeah, that's good. So I think I'm gonna plant it right up here so then it still has these green leaves to photosynthesize. Now, a few things. When you're growing tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, any vining plants, you're gonna want a um, trellis. This bloom, uh, this is a bloom grow bag, bloom, B-L-O-E-M, and they sell this bag that comes with its own trellis that actually like goes in these little side pockets. 
So don't wait for your tomatoes to get too big or your plants to get too big. You wanna put that trellis or cage on the tomatoes when they're small so when they grow, um, the cage is already there. The tomato needs this deep pot to grow in because they have medium to deep roots, but a lot of that soil on the top of the pot is not gonna be utilized. So what I'm gonna do, because I have such little space on my balcony, is I'm gonna do something called companion planting, and I'm actually gonna plant basil at the base of the tomato plant. So the tomato plant will grow in the middle, up tall, and the basil is gonna stay like this tall because we're gonna prune it because we eat so much basil in the summer. And I'll have a nice little tomato, tomato basil caprese pot going on. Um, also, if you're planting with not that much space like me and you wanna get your biggest yield, that is kind of the easiest way to um, use your space. Okay, so I've got my tomato in, and now I'm going to plant the basil in the kind of corners of the pot towards the top that I know the um, tomato roots are not going to utilize. And here's my last tip for you. So I've got the basil seedlings and the tomato in the pot. My mom, this is my mom's favorite tip that she likes to give beginning gardeners. So I have a collection of different basil seeds that have been gifted to me that I bought at the store and I, all, I keep them um, above my kitchen counter and throughout the season I will go into my basil plants and I will seed new basil seeds in the pot. So this plant is going to grow nice and big, I'm going to eat it, <laughs> then there's no basil. So if you put basil seeds that haven't sprouted yet next to your seedlings, you're going to create that continual harvest for yourself. So by the time that I harvest these basil seedlings, these seeds will have already become seedlings and I'll be able to be enjoying my basil and my pesto all season long. Okay, so one of the projects is I need this container for one of my um, other plants for the pepper. I've been growing these strawberries. They came back, so we grew them last year. They came back this year. Um, so I am going to move these strawberries into this long um, planter. And then some garlic got left at the bottom of the pantry basket and sprouted. And I've been reading, normally you plant garlic in the fall, but you can plant it in the spring. So I was thinking it would be fun with garlic. You stick a clove in the soil and then it will um, grow more cloves basically in a year. I'm gonna stick them in and see. I'm always experimenting, I'm always blooming and growing. This is my third balcony garden. I'm still learning a lot. I've never grown garlic, so why not? So I'm gonna go ahead and break these strawberries up, um, get them in here. This is already prepped with the espoma soil and a little bit of that biotone and we'll get this potty started. planted up um, we've got the garlic in between the strawberries listen I don't know if that's gonna work because um, I know that you're supposed to plant garlic in fall but I would expect I would encourage everyone to just experiment and try stuff you learn things I remember once I planted radish seeds and I didn't know how they were gonna sprout and they all sprouted at once and I had to thin them but it also made me like read about them and research it so why not try it? I'm also praying that these strawberries aren't too disturbed, but um, from the different groups that I'm in, um, that I've asked, strawberries seem to be pretty resilient, so we will see. I ordered local wildflower seeds um, that are, they're New York specific wildflower seeds. I'm gonna do a little bed, and I also kind of just sprinkled some seeds at the corner of all of the pots. It's a mix of like 17 different types of wildflower seeds, some annuals, some perennials, some will bloom this year, some will bloom the next year. But I kind of thought, well, if I plant some wildflower seeds, they'll maybe attract some pollinators for all these fruiting plants. So I haven't watered anything. I'm going to get all of these containers on my balcony and I'm gonna water them on my balcony because obviously that's gonna be real messy trying to get drippy containers onto my balcony and Billy has been patient enough with me. I also already have some peas and beans growing on the balcony because they start earlier than all of these plants, so they'll probably be done in July. And so I will, um, in July, I'll harvest them, cut them down, and then probably plant something new in that soil because they actually return nitrogen to the soil, so that'll be really happy soil. Probably I'll grow some more basil because we can't have enough pesto in this household. 
Okay, say a prayer for me as I get this stuff on the balcony. Okay, plant friends, that has been my balcony garden journey from meticulously obsessing, especially because we were in quarantine. It was like the only thing that kept me kind of positive and focused on the summer. Um, from obsessively planning the balcony garden every inch of the space that we have to sourcing amazing plants from Plants by Post. We ordered everything online because of the quarantine. So we got all of our plants delivered from Plants by Post, all of our soil delivered from Espoma. So thank you to our partners and links to both of them are in the show notes to anxiously waiting <laughs> for those plants and soil and containers that I ordered to arrive. We hurdled the air conditioning issue with the raised bed planter hack. I'm very interested to see how that does this summer. I'm super excited about it. Um, we planted everything up. It felt so good to get my hands dirty in the soil. Everything is watered. Everything is settled. Things are probably gonna shift a little bit now. I'm gonna kind of observe the balcony garden for the next week or so. And I will give you updates, so make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you follow me on Instagram at Bloom and Grow Radio because I will be posting about my plant babies all summer. I hope this inspires you. Don't get overwhelmed. This was really intense. Start with one container on your balcony, on your patio, on your lawn. Whatever you can do, just try it. You truly will get so much joy out of this process. Even if it's a plant that you kill, even if it's a plant that doesn't make it, the act of learning, the act of stretching yourself, of growing yourself is truly amazing and there's no better season to do it than now if you're in the northern hemisphere so keep blooming and keep growing plant friends i can't wait to keep you posted